The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Part 1, Listening to Problem Solving. Instructions. You will hear a single conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. You will have to choose the best answer to each question. Total time for this task is around five minutes. You will get total eight questions for this task. Hi, I'm having some trouble with my smartphone. It's acting up, and I can't figure out what's wrong. I'm here to help. I'll do my best to resolve the issue. Can you please describe the problem you're experiencing? Well, the battery seems to drain incredibly fast, even though I barely use it. And sometimes, it just randomly restarts. It's frustrating. I understand your frustration. Let's start with the battery issue. Have you recently installed any new apps or made changes to your settings that might be causing excessive power consumption? No, I haven't installed anything new, and my settings are pretty much the same as before this problem started. All right, let's address the random restarts. Have you noticed any specific triggers for these restarts, like a certain app or action? Not really. It just happens out of the blue, whether I'm using an app or not. It sounds like we might need to troubleshoot this further. I'll guide you through a few steps to diagnose and resolve these issues. Could we start by checking for any pending software updates? Sure, let's do that. What has the customer changed recently regarding their smartphone's settings? What does the tech support agent suggest as a potential cause of excessive power consumption? What does the customer say about recent app installations? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Great! To check for updates, go to your phone's settings, scroll down to System, and then tap on Software Update. If there's an update available, please install it. This often resolves software-related problems. I found the software update option, and it says there's an update available. I'll go ahead and install it. Perfect. After the update, please monitor your phone for a day or two to see if the issues persist. If they do, we can try other troubleshooting steps. Additionally, make sure your apps are up to date as outdated apps can also cause problems. I've updated everything, and I'll keep an eye on the phone's performance. Thanks for your help so far. You're welcome. If the issues persist, feel free to contact us again. We're here to assist you. Also, if you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to ask. We're committed to ensuring your smartphone functions optimally. I appreciate your assistance. I'll keep an eye on things, and if needed, I'll get back in touch. Thanks again. You're welcome. What did the customer find when checking for updates?
Why is it essential to keep apps up to date? What is the customer's primary responsibility after installing the update? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. Thanks for your help. I'll definitely reach out if needed. One more question before I go. Is there anything I can do to optimize my phone's battery life? Certainly. To improve battery life, consider adjusting a few settings. You can reduce screen brightness, use Wi-Fi instead of mobile data when possible, and close background apps when you're not using them. You might also want to enable battery-saving modes offered by your device, which can help extend battery life. Finally, if your phone has a high percentage of battery usage by a specific app, you could restrict or uninstall it. That's helpful advice, thanks. I'll follow these tips to get the most out of my battery. You're welcome. Those tips should help you optimize your battery life. If you ever need further assistance or have more questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. Have a great day and good luck with your smartphone. Thanks again. You too. Goodbye. What should you do if a specific app consumes a high percentage of your phone's battery? What did the customer say as a gesture of gratitude in the conversation? Part 2, Listening to a Daily Conversation Instructions. You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey Jamie, do you remember we have to do our chores today? Yeah, I remember. I can't believe it's chore day already. Well, we can make it more bearable by splitting them up. What do you want to do? I guess I'll take the trash out if you handle the dishes. Fair enough. We can do it together to make it faster. By the way, Mom said we need to clean the bathroom, too. Ugh, the bathroom is the worst. I guess I'll scrub the toilet, and you can clean the sink and mirror? Sounds like a plan. After that, we should vacuum the living room. 
True, but I hate vacuuming. How about a deal? I'll vacuum and you can mop the floor. Deal. That way, we both do the things we dislike a little less. And don't forget to water the plants in the hallway. Yeah, I'll grab the watering can. Thanks for the reminder. No problem. We can make a list of chores and check them off as we go to stay organized. Good idea. It'll help us keep track. After all this, we can watch a movie or play some video games to reward ourselves. Agreed. It's always more motivating when we have something fun to look forward to. Let's get started then. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Absolutely, Jamie. Let's knock out these chores and enjoy the rest of the day. What is the main purpose of the conversation? What motivates Alex and Jamie to split up their chores? What does Jamie mean by teamwork makes the dream work? How does Jamie feel about the idea of cleaning the bathroom? What is the deal made between Alex and Jamie regarding vacuuming and mopping? Part 3, Listening for Information Instructions, you will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question, you will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hello there, I see you have a telescope and an eager look in your eyes. Are you an aspiring stargazer? Yes, I am. I've always been fascinated by the night sky, and I recently got this telescope to explore it further. That's fantastic. Astronomy is a captivating hobby. Have you been observing anything specific lately? Well, I've been looking at the moon and some of the brighter stars, but I'm not sure what else to explore. The moon is an excellent place to start. It's Earth's closest celestial neighbor and offers breathtaking views. To expand your repertoire, you can focus on constellations. For instance, in the winter, you can observe Orion and its famous belt of three stars. That sounds interesting. What about planets? 
Definitely, planets are a great target. You can observe Venus, which is often visible in the evening or early morning. Jupiter and Saturn are magnificent with their distinct rings and moons. Mars, when it's close to Earth, reveals surface details through a telescope. I've heard about meteor showers too. When can I see one? Meteor showers are spectacular events. Some popular ones like the Perseids occur in August. Just mark your calendar and find a dark location away from city lights. I'll keep that in mind. Do you have any stargazing tips for beginners? Patience and persistence are key. Learn to use star charts, apps, or websites to find celestial objects. Be sure to check the weather and always dress warmly. And don't forget, stargazing is more enjoyable when shared with others, so invite friends or family to join you on this cosmic journey. Thank you so much for the advice. I'm excited to continue exploring the wonders of the night sky. You're very welcome. Enjoy your stargazing adventures and don't hesitate to reach out if you have more questions. Happy stargazing. What is the likely reason the aspiring stargazer got a telescope? What is the underlying message in the statement, astronomy is a captivating hobby? What celestial body did the aspiring stargazer mention observing recently? What advice does the astronomer give the aspiring stargazer regarding stargazing? When does the conversation suggest you can see the Perseid meteor shower? According to the astronomer, what celestial body is often visible in the evening or early morning? Part 4, listening to a news item. Instructions, you will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu.
A relentless and unprecedented heat wave is scorching multiple continents, leaving millions sweltering in its oppressive grip. Meteorologists and climate scientists are describing this event as one of the most extreme heat waves in recent memory, prompting concerns about its far-reaching consequences. In North America, the, U the United States is reeling under soaring temperatures, with cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Las Vegas experiencing all-time high temperatures. The scorching conditions have strained power grids, leading to rolling blackouts and concerns over public health as heat-related illnesses surge. Across the Atlantic, it's facing its own heat wave, with temperatures soaring in major cities such as Madrid, Paris, and Rome. Authorities have issued heat advisories, urging residents to stay hydrated and limit outdoor activities. This comes as wildfires continue to ravage parts of southern Europe, fueled by the dry conditions and soaring temperatures. In Asia, countries like India and Pakistan are grappling with extreme heat, causing water shortages and agricultural distress. In the Middle East, the situation is even more dire, with cities in the Gulf region, including Dubai and Riyadh, witnessing temperatures well above 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Climate experts attribute heat wave to a combination of factors, including climate change and unusual weather patterns. Rising greenhouse gas emissions are contributing to the intensification of extreme weather events, and this heat wave serves as a stark reminder of the urgent need for global action on climate change. The record-breaking heat wave underscores the importance of climate mitigation and adaptation efforts. Authorities across affected regions are working to provide relief to their citizens, but the long-term solution lies in addressing the root causes of climate change and reducing emissions to prevent such extreme events from becoming the new normal.
Part 5, Listening to a Discussion Instructions, you will listen to a two minutes video. Then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. God. Well, believe it or not, Travel has a huge impact on a child's academic performance. That's according to a new survey by the U.S. Travel Association. And the CEO, Roger Dow, is here to discuss it with us. He's all the way in from Washington, D.C. Thank you for coming in. Well, it's good to be here. Uh, love Houston. It's where my first job was. Ah. Now, tell us about this study. Yes, yeah, so we had a group called the Wagner Group take a look at travel and uh, student travel, especially educational travel, mm -hmm. and what impact it had on uh, students in their lives. And we talked to 400 people, 200 who had been on a trip when they were between 12 and 18 years old at school, and 200 not. And the results were startling about the difference it made in their future and their educational attainment and their desire to improve their lives and go to school. Okay, so we're talking about higher incomes, better jobs and success basically basically yeah an interesting thing is of the folks that took a school trip uh they earn 12 percent more during their lifetime every year and uh the other thing is over two-thirds of them are more likely to go to high school and continue education finish high school and if they took five trips 95 percent finish high school two-thirds go on to college so it's a huge motivator of people being curious about life and wanting to learn more Okay, now these are not just trips to the beach. These are educational ventures, so to speak. Right, they're educational ventures, and uh, it's a school trip uh, that might be three or four days, the one you talked about of going to Washington years ago yes. and how important that was to you. And also, d even day trips. This, when they go to a museum and, and people look outside their world and say, gee, that's what history is about, that's what culture is about, so important. There are organizations locally that take African American children as well as others on what they called the Freedom Tour, going through the South, giving them an education at each stop, Mobile, Atlanta, uh, various places. Do you think that is one of the best things that can happen to a child? I guarantee you that is. I, those folks are going to come back feeling better about their heritage, the opportunities they have, no question about it. We, we see that all the time. National Geographic runs a program uh, called the uh, Explorer Program, where students can win trips and all come back, and there's a video on our website, TravelEffect.com, that talks about their experiences. They said it shaped their career, it shaped their wanting to go to college, it broadened their experience outside their neighborhood. Okay, how do you get the parents to impress upon their children that they should travel? You know, when I grew up, uh, we used to talk about the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, exactly. do the same thing. <laughs> For my children, I added a fourth R called roaming. And I've said to my children, if you don't roam around the world, this world is gonna pass you by. If you don't let the rest of the world come around America, it's gonna pass us by. So it's so important for parents to say, this is part of your education. And the other thing, we don't all learn alike. Some of us aren't very good at books and things like that, but the experience of seeing things and seeing them come alive is so much more valuable. And, and I think makes you want to learn more. So, so basically you're saying in civics it would be better to go to the nation's capital, walk around the halls and see it as it, it really is rather than reading it from a book? I've been sitting here uh, watching your show. I know more about how TV is put together sitting here watching it than watching it on TV. <laughs> Same thing. When you go and experience it, it's, it comes alive. You actually see uh, the Egyptian mummy versus reading about it on a page in a book. Now, where can we find it? more information on this survey? If you go to our, our website, TravelEffect.com, and it really talks about the influence. And I think it's so important for parents and mothers to impress upon their children and upon their schools. I'm, I'm, I was so disappointed to see the White House close and the government close, because think of the kids who were robbed of that experience that you had when you were young. Mm, and it really was a nice experience. Roger Dow, CEO of U.S. Travel Association. Thank you for joining us Thank here. you, Jose. Thank
Part 6, Listening for Viewpoints. Instructions, you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. Canada's new food guide, introduced in 2019, represents a significant step forward in promoting healthy eating patterns and addressing the evolving nutritional needs of the population. This guide, which replaces the previous food pyramid model, incorporates a holistic and evidence-based approach to encourage individuals to make healthier food choices and adopt a balanced lifestyle. One notable improvement in the new food guide is its departure from focusing on specific food groups and serving sizes. Instead, it emphasizes the consumption of a variety of nutrient-rich foods, with a significant emphasis on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and plant-based proteins. This shift aligns with current scientific research that underscores the health benefits of plant-based diets, such as reducing the risk of chronic diseases and promoting sustainability. Furthermore, the guide places a greater emphasis on mindful eating and the importance of cooking and preparing meals at home. It acknowledges the impact of cultural diversity on dietary choices and encourages individuals to consider their personal and cultural preferences when making food decisions. By doing so, the guide fosters a more inclusive approach to healthy eating, recognizing that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. In addition to the dietary recommendations, the new food guide addresses broader lifestyle factors that contribute to overall well-being. It emphasizes the significance of staying hydrated with water as the beverage of choice while limiting the consumption of sugary drinks. This aspect of the guide aligns with the growing concern over the negative health effects associated with excessive sugar intake. The guide also provides practical advice on creating healthy eating environments, such as cultivating positive eating habits in, ch in children, fostering a positive relationship with food, and being mindful of food marketing. These components highlight the importance of a comprehensive approach that goes beyond individual food choices and extends to the societal and environmental influences on our diets. So, Canada Food Guide marks a commendable improvement over its predecessor by embracing a more holistic and inclusive perspective on healthy eating. By focusing on nutrient-rich foods, promoting plant-based options, and recognizing the influence of culture and environment, the guide offers a comprehensive approach to improving the nation's dietary habits and overall well-being.